There's a brand new tourist attraction in America that's all the rage, but you might want to get your hepatitis shot first. A local San Francisco guide is offering a $30 doom loop walking tour of the city's most crime-ridden spots, letting people get a good whiff of the liberal policies that have turned America's wealthiest city into a cesspool of open-air drug markets and homeless encampments. And while San Fran's decay could be a boon to certain tourism, it's a death sentence to retailers. The owner of Gump San Francisco, a place that I used to frequent as little Greg, is warning that they might close for good after 166 years of doing business. Our business is a business that uh, people love and people want to come into San Francisco, want to come visit a store. But if you, if you can't get around and when you're trying to walk the streets, you step over um, needles and human waste and often bodies on the streets, it makes it an unworkable uh, business environment. And if that wasn't enough human misery on display, how about Philly, where businesses are now being forced to set up booby traps like hidden sprinklers to ward off drug addicts who keep scaring customers? A former drug dealer turned activist comparing the situation in Philly to a zombie movie. So it's Kensington and Allegheny. This is the first stop. They come off the train, come right down here, and it's like a legal pass. Do whatever you want. I mean, you see the chaos that's going around. You're going to see people, blood running down their arm, needles in their neck, needle in their arm, pipe in their mouth. Um, it's everything goes out here. You're literally dealing with chemical warfare. You know, that's what's happening. You see the people falling apart, uh, limbs falling off. You seen Duffy when we was down there. His arm, it looks like a zombie movie. Mm, and speaking of drug addiction, the problem is only getting worse. Americans say fentanyl poisonings are now the biggest public health risk the country faces, surging to number one, followed by obesity, gun violence, and cancer. So, Charlie, I want to go to you first. I'm, I think that we have to pay uh, the Biden administration a compliment. They created new jobs with the Doom Loop tours. <laughs> Uh, they, these jobs would not have happened if it wasn't for his leadership. That's that's really finding the silver lining, Greg. <laughs> yes, that's it is. That's very impressive. <laughs> Thank um, you. But you do have to sort of give a nod to American ingenuity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, Americans have always, or I guess people of all stripes have always loved, they love horror movies. Mm -hmm. uh, they love freak shows. And that's what this is. It's a, it's a modern day freak show, circus freak show. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and it's also, it goes to why Democrats are so su successful talking about climate change, is that all, all of the, the, the terrifying uh, stuff that they promote on their climate change agenda is, it's, it's such a great movie. Everybody wants to go see the horror movie. But the idea that you would sit here and say, well, it's really not, it's, it's really not as dramatic as they're saying, that no one's going to go see that movie. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to see the movie that, oh, no, it's all natural. Mm -hmm. but, um, but no, the, the, the larger problem here, and obviously it's a, it's a huge problem, it's a complex problem, and it's a horrifying problem. Uh, you have so many families uh, of all socioeconomic uh, background, all parts of the country, who are affected by this. And it's horrifying. There's a limited amount of things that the government can do to uh, tackle this. But everything that the government can do, such as closing the border or allowing a thriving economy or prosecuting uh, drug convictions, the Biden administration has completely failed to do. And, uh, you know, it, when you talk to people who have recovered from drug addiction, especially with opioids, the number of them who say that getting arrested and going to jail was what turned me around no ought to be a lesson for us to about where to go forward from here. You know, uh, Judge, you look at these store owners in Philly setting up booby traps. It's kind of funny, but you know if anything goes awry, they're the ones that go to jail. Doesn't it remind you, Greg, of the, there was a guy who was, took a hose to some homeless people in front mm -hmm. of his business, and I think he got arrested for something or charged with something. Look, I, I was a narcotics judge, and I was also a DA, and I created and helped create the drug courts in Westchester County. Look, you need the leverage. You need the stick. They're not going to go into treatment unless they're faced with jail time. And a lot of them would rather, rather go to jail than and go to treatment. Mm -hmm. So um, we had something going for us when we had the big stick and the leverage. What has happened now is we have so normalized drug abuse and drug addiction that uh, we have created these um, uh, uh, safe injection sites and vending machines and with needles and all kinds of uh, uh, laws that literally protect these people and allow them to do this in front of residences and businesses, but in front of 
of your house, Greg, if you want to put a three-foot uh, fence, that, you know, you'll get charged and, and, and fined for doing that, but they can do that all over and destroy things. Mm -hmm. And drugs are more dangerous than ever now. Mm -hmm. If ever there were a time to l at least consider the criminal justice system as leverage, it's now, because a little fentanyl is going to kill you. And let's not let Fauci off the hook. All of this, uh, a lot of this happened because of the school lockouts and the, and the lockdowns in homes. And the highest overdose rate in this country was in 2022. And that was because people couldn't go to treatment, they couldn't have meetings, and we're in a bad place. So we've got to figure out, like San Diego did, it's real easy to clean this stuff up. You pass laws, you enforce laws, and then people like the guy from Gumps don't have to stand there and say, we can't live like this. There is an intentional destruction of America, and it should stop, and it can stop. Speaking of COVID, this is interesting, Dana. Uh, everything was shut down, basically, except for liquor stores, <laughs> marijuana dispensaries, because they were considered essential services. Now, if they'd shut them down, you would have had moonshine which is what you're seeing right now in our streets. We're having moonshine fentanyl because there's no access to safe fentanyl. So they make their own and then everybody dies. So I think logically you could make the conclusion that if you actually made safe, legal drugs available, you would probably see less overdoses, less of these crazy people on the street. Yep, I, I, I do think there's merit to that. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what the experiment, you know, like, oh. Portland tried it. Mm. That was decriminalization, not legalization. So, right. So I, I don't know. I, I would love to see, like, could we just get one test area? <laughs> I, who's going to volunteer to be the test I area? I volunteer where know. Charlie lives. No, uh, I take exception <laughs> to your uh, 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 fentanyl. Comparing fentanyl to moonshine, moonshine is healthy. <laughs> no, it's, there's not. It's really good. Oh, okay, and, I apologize. And, I had no idea. And it's not dangerous. It doesn't come from China. It's not killing yeah, people. It's really delicious. To what the judge was saying about COVID and 2022, the, what had happened? What else happened then? In 2021 20, and 2022, the borders wide open. Yep. Mm -hmm. So then all the opioids are coming. Well, the fentanyl is coming across, and now you have the one pill can kill situation. With um, in California, 20 percent of the deaths uh, were. Eight, ages 18 to 25. I went down this list here, Florida, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Georgia. It's all the same, like the, all the statistics. So today, Victor Davis Hanson, he's, he did a interview. I haven't watched the interview yet. I was just reading about it, where he was talking about the fall of the Byzantine and the Roman empires mm -hmm. and what happened. And I was just thinking about how you just went to Italy. A lot of people we know have gone to Europe this year because one of the reasons you go is not just the food, but it's to experience the most beautiful monuments and the architecture and the tremendous civilization pro progress that was made over those years. And what are we doing? We are tearing down our own historic art. Now, mm. some people say they, they don't deserve to be up there, but you, do, do you destroy them or do you put them all in a park somewhere? Um, we are letting our citizens lie in their own extra commitment. You meant, remember the other day when you said people, uh, the young women going to Pilates on mm -hmm. 6th Avenue? I'm not a young woman anymore, but I was going to Pilates today. <laughs> Every single block, there was a man right. lying in his own excrement. You have to, basically, you cannot breathe through your nose mm -hmm. from here to Columbus You need Circle. to smell from the car. It is horrendous, and we are letting people do that. So I guess, I, I, kudos to the entrepreneurs in San Francisco who are trying to figure out a way to make Duminade out of doom. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Jessica, it seems that your party has turned the American dream into a narcotic one. <laughs> what do you have to say for all the destruction that your party... <laughs> has unleashed on what was once the greatest country that ever was as it slowly and, well, rather quickly descends into chaos. Headline, Greg Gutfeld doesn't think America is the greatest country anymore. <laughs> I don't. Right out of your own mouth. Um, I think that this is devastating. I've spoken about it a lot. San Francisco is a really important city to me. I was just there a few weeks ago. Um, and there are parts of it that I used to hang out in that you just don't go anymore. And you're certainly, I wasn't bringing the baby down there, yeah. pushing Cleo around to see the sights. And <laughs> that's really heartbreaking. Um, and it's happening in a lot of cities. This isn't something that is new. You don't get a decline at this level in just a couple of years. And I understand that there has always been democratic government there. I think it has accelerated from the effects of COVID. But you do see a dichotomy within the Democratic Party in terms of how officials will talk about it. And I think that London Breed has not done as good of a job in doing that. She was late to the game saying, now she's added an extra 200 police officers, mm -hmm. but she was resistant to acknowledging a lot of the problems that were in front of everybody. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, 
these people who are complaining are not Republicans in waiting. They are not turning into voters for the other side. They are Democrats demanding a better quality of life, especially for your tax dollars, which are enormous in cities like that. One thing that the owner of Gump said that I thought was really important said that one of the ways that we can help with this is that companies need to demand that people go back to work. Mm -hmm. Because if high-end workers are now coming back into the city, they will be forced to clean up in a way that you don't have to right now because the buildings are just empty. Right. Right. So you can have squatting, you can have streets full of homeless yeah. people. But if you have folks that are earning six figures and walking past, they're not going to be stepping over people to do that. I thought that that was really interesting and smart. To your point about legalizing drugs, though, that is part of why these safe injection sites are important. That it is better if somebody is but going to... it's still to, the illegal drug. That's the problem. But it's you have to... It's a, I, I understand that and should note also that the fentanyl seizures are up astronomically. So 300% in San Diego, which you called out as a great example, the DEA announced... But they'll just make more. But, why, but, 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 but it does matter that it's being... And then you leave and you lie in the street. I don't know, think that's a great idea. Yeah, that's an issue. No, it's, it's, like, not, it's not a perfect solution, but it can be part of it. And they have... That's been proven out before that safe injection sites do help people because at least you're not putting a dirty needle into your arm and they can make counselors available there. Mm. Uh, if, if the counselor doesn't have any drugs on them, they won't listen to them. <laughs> Well, maybe one does. Uh, there you go. All right. Know, you can bad. offer them jail instead. They'll clean up fast. <laughs> I like that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.